Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. Today I'm going to do an overview of what is Climate Viewer, how it came to be, and how to use it. Because apparently a whole lot of people don't understand the big picture and I want to kind of just go through it all um, so you guys can understand, you know, what are we what are we doing over here? What is a climate viewer? I mean, you know, what is this thing that I'm working on? And uh, a little bit about the history behind it. Um, I hope to break that down for you tonight. So what we're going to do is we'll start by going way back. And by way back, I mean the Wayback Machine or archive.org. Um, Many of you probably don't know this, but before Climate Viewer, I was on uh, Resonated.com and Resonated.net. So before I ever had a Climate Viewer, I was creating Google Earth files, um, and it was called the Radiation Database. And as you can see here, I you know this was the first website I coded by hand. Um, my first web page is kind of kind of hokey looking now. I still, you know, brings a smile to my face to look at it. But the idea was to map radiation around the world, electromagnetic, nuclear, and other. Um, and I started mapping things like HARP and ionospheric heaters and links in the details. Go check it out on Wayback Machine. Um, my other article, my other website was resonated.net, and this was on wordpress.com. And as you can see here in 2011, this was one of my first articles I wrote on weather modification and it included my patent list, which is pretty much world famous now. It's been in everything. But this is where it originated, uh, right here in November of 2011. In one of the lengthiest articles I ever wrote, as you can see, um, lots of patents in here, um, laws from around the world, court cases, all of the international laws, and uh, weather modification projects. It's so freaking long. This was turned into like 25 articles <laughs> on uh, climateviewer.com. But that was at the resonation, the annihilation of mental colonization. And the idea was pretty simple that, you know, your brain, man. They're, 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 it's a war for your brain. And that's the title of the article. The revolution will be packet size. More on that in just a second. Um, after Resonated.com and Resonated.net, um, many tried to figure out who I was, um, you know, who is this Resonated? Um, and that was my logo um, that I used at the time. And I just decided, you know what, if I'm going to be an activist, maybe I need to put my name and face with this. And thus was born Terraforming Incorporated or TerraformingInc.com. And you can see this was around 2013, and I had something called Climate Engineering Exposed. There's my old radiation database logo, and climateviewer.com came right about that time. And that's when I was still on Google Earth. Um, and there's my old Terraforming Inc. logo. Um, you know, I'm an artist. You know, I put a lot of work into drawing things, you know, on Photoshop for this. Um, but that quickly, you know, I said, you know, this isn't really the thing for me. But the thing was, you know, all the way through, the idea was pretty simple that the revolution will not be televised. It will be packet sized. And by that, if you don't know what a packet is, that's what you're what we're doing right now. I'm sending packets your way. And that's the Internet. And the beautiful thing about the Internet is it's full of data and you got to love data. Data is essential. It must flow. It must be used. It's neither good nor bad. There's no illegal data. Data is free. Data cannot be owned. No man, machine, or system can, shall interrupt the flow of data. Blocking data is a crime against datanity. So love data. And I, you know, go on. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. Links in the details. Check out the article. But this is the first article I ever wrote, quoting stuff like Patrick Henry and, you know, about revolution and slave speak and how, you know, this internet is really going to change things, you know. And I really firmly believe that. And boy, have I seen the changes. They have come a plenty. Um, but. You know, beneath this mask, there is more than flesh. Beneath this mask, there is an idea, Mr. Creedy, and ideas are bulletproof. 
which is why I talk about attacking ideas, not people today. And, you know, that brings us right back to where we are today. Let me close those out real quick with climateviewer.com and weathermodificationhistory.com. Climateviewer.com is my blog. Um, that's what used to be resonated.net. Climate Viewer 3D is my map. I'm no longer on Google Earth. They kicked me off and everybody else along with it. And I've added to that weathermodificationhistory.com. So that's the big picture right there. Those are my three websites. That's a little bit about my history. It goes back to 2011. You can go to Wayback Machine and dig all through that. Now, climateviewer.com is my main jump off. That's where you can find out everything about me. Just click on About Jim Lee right here or up in the top corner on any page and read all about me, Jim Lee, the climate viewer guy. I've got a little bit of my history on here, why I do what I do, and I've been referenced since then all over the globe, Harvard University, United Nations. It's a pretty amazing ride. Um, you know, been featured in books like uh, Alana Freeland's Under an Eye and Eye Sky, um, pretty epic stuff. Um, it's been a hell of a ride. Um, but climateviewer.com, I want you guys to see how to use this thing because um, I don't think people really get it. So up here on this main bar are four frequently asked question pages. They're like a one-stop shop for everything I do. Before I get into those, I just want to mention real quick, you can click this interviews tab and you can see interviews that I've done going back to 2015 I've got more I try to dig them up and add them as I find them um, I was just on declare your independence with Ernest Hancock today so you can grab that mp3 and tomorrow night at 10 p.m. I will be on the Grime Erica podcast with Darren and Graham so please tune into that I uh, probably won't be doing a live video tomorrow night because I'll be there so maybe I'll do something during the day but regardless that's on the interviews tab now these facts or frequently asked questions they're jump off points they're for um you know if you've never you know really been in the subject before and you don't know anything about geoengineering and weather modification this is where you go first so click on the geoengineering tab and what you'll see is a frequently asked question section intro to geoengineering and weather modification click it it's long i wrote it um, who's pushing it, you know, like, you know, who's behind it, who's funding it. That's the idea, you know, is geoengineering safe? What, you know, people are saying lots of science stuff and, you know, academic journals, who's controlling your weather. You can actually see the weather modification projects that were reported in NOAA and then jump over to climate viewer 3d and do the same thing on a map. So you come over here to geoengineering under climate viewer maps and you can see those weather modification programs just by clicking here um, because, you know, data is viewed in different ways. And it's, it's some people like a map as opposed to just reading it, you know, being able to visualize it's kind of important. Seeing cloud seeding projects from around the world and, you know, ground based cloud seeders, you know, and fly to them. Come down here, grab the satellite. Oh, I want to see actually what that looks like. Turn it in 3D. Pretty fun stuff. Um, and, and that's just the general idea. You know, there's many different ways to consume data and people learn in different ways. And I like all of them. Um, and with, a, with a weather modification history, it's a different kind of map. It's chronological. So you can come down here and actually see the timeline in order from 1800 to present. All of this is linked up over here on just the geoengineering page. Where is it happening? A um, couple maps you might want to see. There's my map. Um, the ETC groups map of geoengineering projects worldwide. Fascinating stuff. You should click on it. It's a real map. It's pretty epic. Um, and here's their first version of that map. It was just a PDF. Now they've got a map like me, except their map's got way more dots than mine. I'm going to have to get all them dots and put them on my map eventually. Um, but that's what this the, the, the facts are about. And then in them, each fact usually has some sub pages. So you have a heart page which you can see harp in the sky heaters, same idea. It's another fact, guess what? There's a map of harp. If you click on that, it'll actually take you over to Climate Viewer 3D and fly you down to the ground to harp. Oh, there we are. And you can see it in 3D, click on it, read all about it. 
So that's the general idea. I made a map where I can link to a specific thing and fly to it. In, in these frequently asked questions sections, um, what is an ionospheric heater? Why do they heat it? You know, things like that. Do they affect your brain? Essential reading, articles I've written. Um, and then my, you know, harp in the ionospheric heater map. Same idea. Click on that. It'll take you to the map, fly you there, turn all these on, and you can look at that. And at the bottom of each of the facts is want more? See all of the articles. Well, those articles, pretty lengthy. Just go down through the list. They are also available at the top of each page under archives. So if you click on archives, each page, the geoengineering page, is right here under categories. That's the list of articles. So we have geoengineering, maps, pollution, privacy, and propaganda, the three P's. That's regular blogs. Yeah, that's, this is my blog. You know, it's regular blog stuff. You guys have probably heard of categories and tags. And then the tags, artificial clouds. That's where I put all of my articles about chemtrails and planes making clouds so dig into that lots of stuff there so back to this geoengineering page um i have a fact for chemtrails as well it's the contrail induced cirrus or cirrus clouds matter the shady truth about contrails guess what this is probably my longest page why because this is the one people argue the most about links to weather mod history right there on the sidebar of every page um, but yeah, there's a lot in this fact here uh, and the EPA hearing I attended in Washington, D.C. along with Max Bliss, Patrick Roddy, Amanda Bays, and Michael Saraceno. And you can watch the EPA beg me not to come and then you can watch me go anyway and see our C-SPAN televised um, hearing on that in 2015. Pretty amazing stuff. And then the history of what happened after the hearing right here about how Obama and the, and the ICAO and the IPCC all decided, hey, we'll use biofuels for contrail control. So, and of course, want more? Artificial cloud articles, and that'll get you to the chemtrail articles, like the interview I did with Max Bliss just recently, Fear and Loathing in the Chemtrail Community. So that's how you use um, ClimateViewer.com over on the pollution page. This is where I map pollution. Um, everybody's heard about Climate Viewer 3D by now, I hope, um, at climateviewer.org. But if you haven't, you can come to this page and see what matters to me. And as far as climate change is concerned, it's things that affect us all. Destruction of clean, drinkable water. Destruction of land, deforestation, monoculture crops, drilling or what I call killing fields. And toxic waste dumps around the world. That's real climate change. Destruction of the ocean, dumping chemicals, weapon, chemical weapons, nuclear reactors, and coating the entire ocean in plastic. And finally, destruction of the sky. And we all know about that. Weather modification, geoengineering, and electromagnetic pollution from ground and space-based sources. Did a great video on that just recently. Plant trees or geoengineering will kill billions because... Climate change happened before with the Dust Bowl, and how did we fix it? We planted 220 million trees. Those trees are in great danger right now. That's what my pollution page is about. Two subsections on that. Nuclear radiation, where you can see my nuclear reactor map. And why should I care about nuclear reactors? Um, I also have a nuclear explosion map. So I put two maps on this one. Um, and shout out to Rad Chick, Christina Consolo. Go check out her blog. She used to be on my website when I had other writers on climateviewer.com. Um, won't get into the legal aspects of that, but basically I got a whole lot of copyright lawsuits come my way and decided I needed to be responsible for myself instead of other people's writings because Lord knows if I get another $6,000 lawsuit, I'm going to cry myself to sleep. Um, but yeah, I give four main points for why you should care about nuclear uh, radiation right there. And then I have an EMF section for electromagnetic radiation because this is called electrosmog or wi fi cell phones, Wi-Fi, and EMF health effects about how we are being inundated with things like 5G. And I haven't even added 5G to this website. It's been so long since I've talked about um, wireless. You can see it hasn't been updated since 2014. Maybe I'll stop talking about chemtrails for a minute and uh, dig into 5G. I just, you know, got to make the time for that. I'd love to update this page with some of that, but you can get the facts at some of these websites that I point you to because 
hey man, kids should not be exposed to the, the type of EMF we're having right now. Oh, look at that. Missing videos. Going to have to update that. And of course, articles at the bottom of each of these pages. Next up, we have privacy. And on the privacy page, I talk about, um, you know, things like uh, just basically the, the, the New World Order, you know, the real version of the New World Order. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, people don't understand what a technocrat is, what the surveillance state is, what they really mean by FISA abuses. The FISA court is a way to get access to something called the Five Eyes, Signals Intelligence, what used to be called um, Echelon. Um, Snowden released it. It was called Prism. But really, it's about the 14 eyes of the New World Order. The five eyes are Australia, Canada, New Zealand, U U United Kingdom, and U.S. The nine eyes are Denmark, France, the Netherlands, and Norway. Finally, the 14 eyes at the bottom of the pyramid is Germany, Belgium, Italy, and Spain, Sweden. So what does this mean? This is something called the Anglosphere. And what do they have in common? They share all of their spy data with each other in a big, you know, network called Stone Ghost. And you can read all about how Russia paid a Canadian Navy spy for $3,000 a month to have access to all of this information. And quote, it's a computer system that links the five eyes. The five eyes are blah, blah, blah. All their information is shared on the Stone Ghost computer network. So that's what Hillary and Obama and the DOJ and FBI were all abusing was they were making up lies to get access to this huge NSA network. And if you want to know more about that network, of course, I have a surveillance map, which you can click on. Come over to Climate Viewer 3D and go to the um, privacy section right here, Government and Surveillance. Let me clear the map off. And you can see those five eyes So right here. I haven't mapped the 14 eyes, but I've already mapped the five eyes. And you can go around and see things like the Utah Data Center. That's where Hillary Clinton's deleted emails are. That's where everything in the world is, in fact. If you click this little camera icon right here, it'll fly you right down to the ground where that's at. And you can see there's the building. Matches up nicely with that photo that I put together. Um, so this took, you know, three years, three, four years to create many of these maps you're seeing. And I did them all at night. And the reason why is because I'm hella nosy, you know? And then I said to myself, well, you know, what, what about the undersea cables? You know, are they, how do they get all this information? Well, they, they have ways to listen to every single communication, whether it's satellite based or the cables running under the ocean. They have facilities at all these junctures to listen to everything. So this is what everybody's after is your secrets to spy on you and why is that because if you talk about pollution they're going to violate your privacy and finally they're going to make up propaganda about you and that's what pollution privacy and propaganda is about the three are intimately related and you can read all about that on here how stone ghost network was used to target activists in paris that didn't want Monsanto corn. And they said, Country Team Paris, this is the State Department, sending a cable in the original WikiLeaks, Country Team Paris recommends we calibrate a target retaliation list that causes some pain again across the EU, um, but also focuses in part on the worst culprits. Culprits being you, the activists that don't want this shit. Um, the list should be measured rather than vicious and must be sustainable over the long term since we should not expect an early victory. And then you can see a timeline of the New World Order here starting in 1921, going through the entire history of the Council of Foreign Relations, the One World Federated Government. We must haul down the American flag, haul it down, stamp on it, spit on it. Once having joined the One World Federated Government, no nation shall succeed or, or revolt because with the atom bomb in its possession, the federal government of the world would blow that nation off the face of the earth. And their goals are to achieve permanent peace through universal disarmament 
enforced by law. That's that taking your gun stuff. That's Australia already fell for this. And of course, as the saying goes in America, from my cold dead hands. Um, for a reason, because these New World Federalists, Federalists as they are called, will say things like, we shall have world government, whether you like it or not, by conquest or consent. So this is the real history of the one world government and their, their technocrat um, mechanism for silent weapons for quiet wars is this NSA network, this five eyes, 14 eyes. That's what they're listening to this broadcast right now on. That's what Facebook and Google willingly give to this network. That's what this is all about. So, like I said, once you talk about pollution or speak up, they're going to violate your privacy. And then the last stop, of course, is propaganda, fake news, and activism. And in my personal opinion, this is the most important page on my website because it goes right to the heart of things. And the heart of things is fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to hate, anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. So they use language to control your minds. While everybody's so focused on mind control weapons, these weapons are words, generally speaking. It is hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Language creates spooks that get into our heads and hypnotize us. Please read The Anatomy of Slave Speak uh, by Frederick Mann. Um, this is one of the most important documents I have ever read. I also put together a playlist of what I call Slave Speak, slave speak TV. Um, and you can go through those videos. They're pretty fascinating on language thinking and levels of abstraction. Um, sci war interpreting neuro linguistic programming and it's just this is my favorite playlist ever if you want to burn a good weekend watch this whole playlist it'll blow your mind but the point being that this is the control mechanisms this is how they divide and conquer this is what the persona management software sock puppet trolls that we deal with on a daily basis. This is their MO, this is how they work. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this than anything else because for this revolution to truly be packet sized, we have got to understand that people are controlled by fear, uncertainty, and doubt, FUD. Now FUD started, um, really this term came about because of IBM and they were trying to can you know convince people that other products would be dangerous oh no don't buy their stuff buy our stuff because of these you know fear mechanisms and fear is the mind killer it is a demoralizer it is used in everything from the mainstream media news to the fake activists or the infotainers on youtube fear is their seller seller you know the opposite of fud is knowledge, love, and laughter. And that's why I do what I do. I try to steer as clear of any kind of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in everything that I do because if I go that route, I am part of the problem. So if you don't know about that, then you probably should hear what L. Ron Hubbard, the famous Scientologist, calls Technique 88. The only way you can control people is to lie to them. You can write that down in your book in great big letters. The only way you can control anybody is to lie to them. When you find an individual is lying to you, you know that individual is trying to control you. Interesting fact. The false left-right paradigm, many of us have heard of this. Christian versus Muslim, white versus black, Republican versus Democrat, gay versus straight, hell, Red Sox versus Yankees, my, my neck of the woods in South Carolina, Clemson versus Carolina. Um, anyone who tells you group X is bad and Y group is awesome is using slave speak, is trying to control you. And these are pretend wars and their purpose is to divide and keep you so busy arguing with each other that you never ever get to the root of the problem. Contrail versus chemtrail. Contrail versus chemtrail. Bravo, honey. Exactly. 
So that language is the mechanism of control. And that's why I focus on calling them something totally different. I call them artificial clouds or what they really are, cirrus clouds, because whether it's a chemtrail or a contrail, it ends up being a cirrus cloud. So there's your left-right paradigm right there, and I'm stuck right in the middle. I always try to ride that fence as best I can because if you get into one side or the other, you're probably going to screw up. So... Um, great video right here on how television works, but it works kind of like this. If you see this picture, this is the bad guy. And if you see this picture, this is the good guy. And then if you see this picture, you kind of get the whole picture. And people will, you know, try to make you see their version of events through editing, through all kinds of things like neuro-linguistic programming. It's a, it's a school of thought where language is used to control people's minds. Well, what is that? It's a perception management. So it goes like this. Glass china and reputation are easily cracked and never well mended. Ben Franklin. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. So perception management... For those who've never heard of this stuff, I want you to see this. Uh, can I? Wish it, it's not going to let me pop that up in a new window, really? Seriously? Open image in a new tab. Let's blow that up big. So this is the perception management process. And this is how the New World Order technocrats, the you know mainstream media, any corporation you ever dealt with, this is how they work. They do a perception audit. And they do that. With the five eyes, with spy networks, with Facebook, with Google, YouTube, all of these. They, they gauge your perception of reality. Then they come up with their objectives, their tar target audience, you. They get their positioning and key methods, uh, messages, their core program elements. They come up with a timeline, give that thing a budget, and then they evaluate what that's going to do. Situational analysis. Are we winning? Are we winning the hearts and minds? Are we winning this perception war or the info war? And then you repeat the process with a perception audit to see if you were effective. And the wheel goes round and round and round. So in the Department of Defense or Military, this is called Psychological Operations, PSYOPs, Psychological Warfare, Psy War, Narrative Networks. Bet you haven't heard that one. Please look into that. Or Mind War, which is the latest version of that. And in that, they believe that, you know, during the Iraq War, though we, you know, it was the, you know, fastest whoop-ass in history, we truly lost that war because we did not have the American people's minds and hearts behind it. So in, a, in an NDAA, um, they basically reauthorized the military to lie to us. So while everybody's so focused on the Russian government influencing our election, you can bet your ass the CIA and NSA influence this election more than anybody with their psychological operations. In the corporate side, it is known as neuro-linguistic pro programming, public relations, or better put, perception management. So I'm going to give you an exact real-world scenario on this. This is an actual perception audit tool on the screen right here. And this is the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown. And this is the saddest graph I've ever seen in my life. Because what you see right here is March 11th, 2011. Everybody remembers. That's the day that the Fukushima nuclear plant blew up. This was at nuclear.carboncaptureReport.org. And what it does is it gauges blogs, Twitter, news articles, news story, blog posts, tweets, YouTube videos, all of it. Then it gives it a tone. Is it good? Is it positive? Is it negative? Activism has its own tab. You got to love that. You, we're, we're all special people. And what we see up here is that on the day of the nuclear um, meltdown, 9,050 um, articles... Um, news, 7,000 blogs, 361 Twitter, tone, negative 1.48, YouTube vids, 23. I'm sure there were way more than that. But regardless, there's a huge spike right here. So what do they do? They do their perception audit, and then they go out and try to change people's minds. And what happens precipitously? Minds change. 
and they fall back to here. And this is where we are today. And pick a topic, geoengineering, weather modification, GMOs, vaccines, typically stays around here. Because anytime we get to here, it's a problem. So what do they do? They run their advertisements. They run their disinfo campaigns. They put their sock puppets and trolls into overtime. And they get to work getting that perception back to here. And then you see another spike right here. This spike is when the Japanese government finally came out and admitted that there was a full meltdown and how bad it really was. But as you can clearly see, that spike is nowhere near as big as this spike. So they barely even gave a damn and didn't have to run as many ads this time. And that's sad. That's truly sad. So that's why public relations and why activism fails. Because of the deliberate dumbing down of America, attention deficit and activism does not mix, and most people don't read anything anymore. Does technology cause ADHD? In the last 50 years, we have created platforms in which we present th things in surreal time. When you condition the mind to become accustomed to high levels of input, there's a chance that reality can just become boring. And a lot of you see this in a lot of children who are addicted to video games, their cell phones and TV. Um, they need it in hyper reality time, and they can't even sit still without you know going into please you know just overload me. So they don't have the patience to read anything anymore. And 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 this leads you know right to the main points: the the seven deadly sins of activist etiquette: self promotion at the expense of the movement. Now, I think we've all experienced that with an individual or two. Unsolicited, unsolicited bulk email, hacktivism, I put debatable because I've seen that really change the world. Um, violating copyright, mm, nagging, yeah, violating privacy. Activists violating the privacy of others is just got to be the worst. And number seven, the top one, being scary because fear, uncertainty, and doubt is the mind killer. It demoralizes. It makes it so nobody wants to do anything about any of this. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to fight here. And I'm trying to show people the big picture. So if you care about pollution, all yeah, and all every bit of this is on climateviewer.com. I'm just going through the facts right now, the four main pages that sum this up for you. We must do better. Those who love peace must learn to organize as effectively as those who love war. Couldn't have said it better myself. So you can dig into the articles there, leave me comments and stuff like that. But this is what climateviewer.com is about. It's about the three P's, pollution, privacy, and propaganda. And I have a heavy em emphasis on geoengineering because I happen to know that the 200-year the history of that, which you can see, at weathermodificationhistory.com, dig into 800 newspaper articles, see the 10 most uh, 10 technologies to own the weather today, people patents, programs, and laws, um, the the weather modification map, my my solution to geoengineering, the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, and understand that the cycle just keeps repeating it was pluviculture then it was cloud seeding now it's geoengineering all along it was geophysical warfare with things like harp ionospheric heaters cloud making bombs cia screwing with sugar crops in cuba president ahmadinejad in iran saying that europe's stealing their rain this is the big picture so if you can get if you can see the big picture then all the minutia just adds and builds on that and that's what I hope to achieve with climateviewer.com is to give you the big picture and arm you with the tools to make you a more effective activist. So, like I said, if you want to see the articles, you can just hit the categories up. There are many different tags which are specific to like solar radiation management, ionospheric heaters, my solution, the NMOD AA, um, interviews, the three P's, my geoengineering section, Climate Viewer 3D's here. Please join our chat. Um, I have a Discord chat up now. You just click that thing like that. It's going to say, hey, you've been invited. Accept the invite. Come in, sign up, and get in on the conversation. And as you'll see, people are in here discussing things like, you know, oh, look, somebody just posted my video. Did you say Ionizer made it in Abu Dhabi? That's right. 
Um, most people don't know about cloud ionizers, but this is a, uh, my little spot. I just created this chat room. It is linked to my Patreon. So if, for anybody who wants to support it's my work, free. yeah, it's free of charge. Everything is free here. There's no, there's no advertisement um, on here that isn't an advertisement for something I'm doing. Um, you know, no, ex yeah, the chat's free. Um, you don't have to pay for the chat. It's at the top of weather mod. Uh, I haven't put a link to the chat on weather mod history. Um, but I do have a, a link to the chat also on climate viewer 3d right here at the top. You just click chat right there. Um, but this is just, you know, my little place for people to congregate who are climate viewers who have seen the big picture and really want to dig into the details. So please join me over in the chat um, and please support me on Patreon. Uh, this is my only source of income for all of this work that I'm doing. I've been doing it for seven years. I think I do it better than most. And I'm very devoted and passionate about this. So I have 18 patrons so far. Um, that's growing pretty rapidly. I, I greatly appreciate those who believe in me and support me this way. And I hope that you guys will continue to support me. I hope this gives you a bigger idea of what's going on over here at climateviewer.com because I want to be solutions based and that's why I'm proposing things like the environmental modification accountability act. That's why you're going to find that this is a no fear porn zone It is just loaded to the gills with facts to arm you to be a better activist so that together we can change this world. And you know, the, the, anybody who ever watched GI Joe would say knowing is half the battle. And if you come to my websites, I can promise you this. By the time you're done, if you spend the time and effort to read the material that I've already provided, you're going to get more out of that than you will watching hundreds of YouTube videos. Um, and I really, truly hope that you do, because I didn't build all this for you for no reason. And I certainly didn't do this to make myself famous. I just recently started putting my face on these videos to try to explain this to people um, because it appears by, based on my one counter that not a lot of people are reading it. Um, so I'll continue to do videos and explain it to you, but it's not going to matter if people like you don't resonate that. So I hope that this message resonated with you. I hope that you'll share climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. Do not allow people to be gatekeepers. You know, I support, you know, even the, the people who say don't, you know, support Jim Lee, I still say go to their websites because you know what? I don't have it all figured out. I'm 41 years old. I'm still learning every day. And every time I learn that I'm wrong, I go back and I edit my site to make it right. And it's been pretty rare lately. So I must be doing something really, really right. And if you do see that I have made it in something incorrect, if you see that I have omitted something and should be added, please be the first to tell me. My phone number is right here. My email is right here at the top of the page. My social media is over here. Um, there's the chat room. I'm. You can get in touch with me. I am a real person. And... With that being said, please, you know, support me on Patreon, share my stuff. I would greatly appreciate it because I have devoted so much time and effort into getting this material together for you. Come over to climateviewer.com, hit the front page. The news will be there. Um, constantly updating this stuff. As I make these videos, these live videos, I'm putting them over on my YouTube channel and then they come over here to the articles um, and they will be there indefinitely. So, and, and be sure to check out Climate Viewer 3D. Tutorial video on that. Probably need to update that because I'm constantly screwing with the map. But as you can see, death of Google Earth and the old Climate Viewer 3D. Um, I've come a long way since, you know, I first started to learn to make websites. Um, I code all this stuff myself, as you can see right here. There's my sublime text, and you can see climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org. Oh, that's the that's the map, actually. I've got two of these up right now. Let me. Is Gige. Gige. I, I was actually in the middle of coding right before I started. So this is my Hugo site, my climate viewer uh, thing. Oh my God, I just launched um, Minecraft. <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. Can't Minecraft while you're doing a live video, Jimbo. 
All right, so guys, that's that's the big story. That's Climate Viewer in a nutshell. This is my jump off climateviewer.com. I hope that this has been an informative video. I hope that it gives you a bigger perspective on you know who I am, why I do what I do. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, always hit me up on my email. I, I you know, I'm pretty good at responding to those. The chat's getting kind of overwhelming. It's hard for me to respond to everything in the chat, but that is a place where other climate viewers can come to meet like-minded individuals and have a free discussion, uh, free from censorship. Join the chat, support me on Patreon, and more importantly than anything else that I can possibly say, attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.